The first reading today, and St. Paul tells Timothy that the time is going to come when people will not endure sound teaching. Rather, they're going to look for teachers who will tickle their ears according to their own lusts, as he says, and they will turn aside from the truth and they will turn instead to fables. Well, we're in a situation similar to that at this point, but we have to look a little bit further at what St. Paul talks about. He says that he has that Timothy therefore has to bear with all things, be watchful, bear with tribulation patiently, work as a gospel, the word of the preacher of the gospel, and so on. And then he goes immediately into the point that he himself is being poured out as a sacrifice, his deliverance is at hand. He's fought the good fight and he's kept the faith and so on. In other words, what he's telling us is that this is going to be our time to prove ourselves. This is our time of purification. St. Paul had his time and he showed himself to be faithful. He ran the race, he completed the course, and he kept the faith through all of the things that had happened to him. Now he's telling Timothy, look, here's what's gonna be happening. Here's what you have to do. And only when you can look back at things and say, I'm at the end of my life, I've run the race. I've finished the course and I've kept the faith. Only then can we say that the Lord, the just judge, will give me this merited crown. But before that crown can be given, we have to prove ourselves to be faithful. That's what we're being given the opportunity to do. Now our Lord told us in the gospel that we are a city set upon a hill. That can't be hidden. The lights of the city are pretty obvious. And remember back in World War II when they told everybody to turn off all the lights in London? Well, it was still pretty obvious where London was. Didn't take a genius to figure it out. You can't hide it, even when we try. You are the light of the world. That cannot be hidden. Jesus didn't light a lamp and then put it underneath a bushel basket. He lit a lamp and then he put it out where everybody's gonna be able to see it and that lamp is you. And so in the midst of all that's going on in the world, we have to be a light in the darkness. And people are gonna try to put that light out it's just like in the morning when you get up and you turn on the light, oh my goodness, your eyes don't like it. Your first inclination might be to turn the light off. I'd rather be in the darkness. No, we don't. We wanna be in the light. We wanna be children of the light. Jesus said we've been freed from the kingdom of darkness and we've been brought into the kingdom of light. Why would we want to go back to the darkness? Because we won't be persecuted? because we'll fit in with the dark. We don't wanna be in darkness. Yeah, the light doesn't fit in with the darkness very well. But when our Lord came into the world as the light, we are told the darkness couldn't overcome it. And if the light that the Lord has ignited within you is there for himself because he's the light of the world, the darkness can't overcome that either. The darkness cannot overcome the love of Christ, which is in you. But now it's our task to make sure that that's what's seen, that that's what's recognized. Because we're told that people have to see our good works and give glory to our Heavenly Father. That doesn't mean we have to necessarily be out doing all of these things. It means we have to be living a good life we have to be living a holy life. We have to be that light out in the darkness and it will be obvious for everybody to see. People have turned from the truth. They've chosen the lie. They've chosen darkness over light. Yeah, some of them aren't gonna like the light. They're gonna persecute you. They're gonna try to put the light out. It isn't gonna work. The only one who can bury that light is you. 
You can put a bushel basket over it. You can hide it. You can say, I don't want to be the light. I want to be the darkness. That's not what God chose for you. And so then we have to ask ourselves, do I want to do God's will? Do I want to do my own? If it's my own will, I'm going to choose the darkness. If I want to do God's will, he's called me to be the light. That's what we have to be about. It's not always popular. It's not always fun. It's certainly, well, I guess it can be exciting. But if you're like St. Paul, getting whipped and beaten and scourged and so on, that might not feel too exciting. But he certainly didn't have a boring life. He was a light out there and the people didn't like it. But the more that they tried to put the light out, the brighter the light burned. That's what God wants from you and me. So we're living in a day when people don't want the truth. We're living in a time when they've turned away and they go for fables. We live in a time where they're looking for somebody who's going to tell them what they want to hear. And tragically, we have lots of bishops and priests who are willing to do exactly that. That's not what we're called to. So we have to say no. This is our time. Just as St. Paul talked about his time, he talked about the time of St. Timothy, now he's talking about our time. He had to prove himself faithful. He had to run the race. He had to finish the race. He had to show himself to be faithful to the end because that's exactly what our Lord told us. Those who remain faithful to the end will be saved. Not just those who say, Lord, Lord, that's not going to get us very far, but only those who are faithful to the end. So we need to reject the fables as well, fables of cheap salvation. As long as you believe in Jesus, you're going straight to heaven. Really? Wrong. Jesus did all the suffering for you. You don't have to do any. Wrong. These are lies. These are fables. This is garbage that is not the truth. And there are lots of them out there. We have to reject that. We need to live the truth. We need to be united with the Lord because he's the light. And if we don't have the fuel coming from our Lord that's going to keep that flame alive, it's going to burn out because we chose to cut ourselves off from him because we chose the darkness instead of the light and the fables instead of the truth. He's the truth. If we're going to choose the truth, we're choosing him. And we're choosing him up there on the cross where he can't be hidden. He's out there in plain sight for everybody to see and for us to give glory to our Heavenly Father because of his goodness. And he's calling us to himself exactly as he said, when I'm lifted up from the earth, I'll call them all to myself. That's where he's calling from. That's where he's calling to. And that's where our light is going to shine the brightest. That's where we will have an opportunity to prove ourselves worthy not only to be in the race, we will finish it, and we will prove ourselves then to be faithful. And a merited crown will await us because of the fidelity of choosing and living the truth, the light, the love of Jesus Christ.